In this tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you everything you need to know to get your flash kits painted, including how to paint all the different colours on them, the green skin, and I'll finish up by showing you some cool things to finish them off. Welcome to Tabletop Ready, my name's Michael and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to paint some Orc flash kits. If you want to know how I get my miniatures ready for painting, make sure to go watch the tutorial I made showing you how I do it. I'll put the brushes and paints I use in this tutorial in the description below as well as putting them on the screen when I use them. If you enjoy my content please give this video a like and let me know in the comments below. And if you want to help support what I do, you can become a channel member. And I also have a Patreon which I'll link in the description. I really appreciate any help and support and it goes a long way to growing the channel and allows me to keep improving the content I create for you. I want to give a massive thank you to Daryl King who recently became a patron. I really appreciate it and it makes a huge difference. The flash kits have got to be my favourite orc unit. Who doesn't like orc pirates? They're full of character, they've got huge guns and they're super colourful. Exactly what you want from an orc. The flash kits can be quite a challenge to build though because they've got so many options to choose from. The guns themselves have more parts than your average miniature. I've built my flash kits in sub assemblies to make painting them much easier. For example the gun arms have been less separate so I can get to all the detail on the body. I've also undercoated everything using white scar spray. And if you want to learn more about how to undercoat your miniatures, I now have a tutorial dedicated just for that so make sure to go check that out. The flash kits look really complicated and daunting to paint, but don't worry because I'll be breaking down each step to make things easier. I've split up this tutorial focusing on painting their clothing, their skin, weapons, armour and finish up by showing you some cool ways to finish them off. In the first part of this tutorial I'm going to go through the steps to getting all the clothing painted, washed and highlighted as these details are the perfect place to start. Whenever I'm painting orcs I'll always start with their clothing by painting all the base colours because I can give all these details a wash at the same time making it quicker and easier. You can choose whatever base colours you want for your flash kits and I would recommend mixing it up between each flash kit. I have chosen to paint straps and pouches the same colour though. And while you're getting all your colours down remember to thin your paints to give you more control and I find an equal amount of water does the trick. Keep your brush moving and try not to go over anywhere you've already painted to prevent creating any unwanted texture whilst the paint is still drying. It's also better to paint in multiple thin layers so we don't lose any detail on our flash kits. So make sure to let each layer fully dry before repeating the process of painting your next layer until you're happy you have a solid colour. Once you have all the clothes, boots, straps and accessories painted we want to add some definition and we can do this easily using a wash. To make the wash I'm using an equal amount of both Agrax Earth Shade and Lamy Medium. This is going to weaken the strength of the shade so it doesn't affect our base colours too much but still does its job of bringing out all the detail once it dries. You want to use enough of the wash to cover the miniature comfortably. If you see the wash pulling up too much in some areas you can remove excess wash with your brush and then make sure to let the wash fully dry before moving on to doing anything else. Now the wash is dried we want to continue bringing out all the detail with some highlights. When highlighting I like to have a brush that I keep separate so I know I have a nice point on it when I need it. You also want to think about the consistency of the paint. I find I don't use as much water as I normally would as this is going to help give us that strong colour without multiple passes we would normally need to do when layering. It's also a good idea to remove some of the paint from the brush onto some kitchen paper which is going to help prevent those thick blobby lines. To create the highlights you want to paint thin lines on any raised detail and edges that you want to stand out. Take your time and just use colours that are a lighter shade than what you're highlighting so they stand out. And when you're done we can move on to the fun part of painting the orc skin. As an orc enthusiast I know how important painting orc skin is. So that's why I'm going to show you how to easily achieve some amazing looking orc skin. We want to start by getting a solid base colour using auric flesh. We then want to start bringing out the detail next by painting the raised areas and details using an equal mix of auric flesh and ogren camo. This is then given a soft shade using beltan green 
which has been thinned down with an equal amount of Lamy Medium. Once that has dried, use some Colia Green Shade just in the darker recesses around the skin. We're now going to use Ogryn Camo as it is and work on layering up on the raised areas again, creating a gradual transition. Now we're going to work on getting some warm tones into the skin with the glaze using Gizla Flesh. You want to thin the Gizla Flesh with an equal amount of Lamy Medium and when applying this to the skin, we want to make sure it's an even thin coat and this is what we would call a glaze. Build up the colour using multiple layers, making sure to let each layer completely dry before applying the next layer. The areas are a glaze of the lower lips, nose, ears, knuckles and around any scars. A glaze of Reichland Flesh Shade is used to shade these areas. Let's finish painting the skin using some Screaming Skull to highlight. With the skin finished, we still need to paint the teeth, tongues and eyes. For any teeth around the flash kit, start with some more gas bone. Now apply some Reichland Flesh Shade to these areas. And once that has dried, use some Screaming Skull to paint thin lines towards the sharpest point to finish. To paint the eyes, start with some Mephiston Red. Then apply a small dot in the centre of the eyes using Fire Dragon Bright. If you need to paint any of the tongues, I'll just paint them using some Pink Horror, as you're not going to be able to see them. Let's go ahead and get the Flash Kit Snaz Guns painted. The only reason we want flash kits is for their huge weapons and in this section I'll be showing you how to paint them. Let's first get all the metals painted, not just on the guns but everywhere on our flash kits. Go around all the parts picking out any details you want to be metal using Iron Hand Steel, Balthasar Gold and Retributor Armour. We can now shade all these areas together at the same time using Norn Oil, Agrax Earth Shade and Right Flesh Shade on any gold details you've painted. To create more interest, bring some of these metals back up to the colour you started with. And to finish the metals, let's do a dry brush of Stormhouse Silver. First work the paint into the bristles and then you want to remove as much of the paint as you can until it's not coming off onto the paper towel. When you dry brush in, you want to keep your brush moving pretty quickly against the details. What's happening is the paint is being deposited right on the edges and raised areas and is not being allowed to get into any of the shallower details. Now the metals and our flash kits is done, let's paint the gun casings. Start with Evilson Scarlet and as always make sure to get a solid colour. Next use some Norn Oil in and around the details to create some definition. This is known as a recess shade. Two highlights can now be painted, starting with a chunky highlight using Wild Rider Red and the Fire Dragon Bright is used for an edge highlight. The wires can be painted using all kinds of colours. Just pick your base colours, give them a wash with a shade and then paint a thin line to highlight. Our flash kits are going to need a lot more colours that we currently have so I want to go through some of the other colours you may want to paint. The other appeal of flash kits is their bright and colourful scheme so let me show you how to paint some of the different colours and details you find on your flash kits. To paint any yellow areas, start with some Corax White. This is going to make painting flash kits yellow a lot easier. Now apply a wash of Cassandora Yellow and finish with an edge highlight using Screaming Skull. Black can be painted starting with the Bad and Black, with a chunky highlight using Ashen Grey, and Dawnstone for an edge highlight. You'll also want to know how to paint any skulls and bones. Paint these details first of all with more gas bone. And when that's dried, I like to use Skeleton Hole Contrast to create the definition. Once that's dried, use Ushabti Bone to paint any raised areas. And finish with a Screaming School highlight. You can paint white easily using Corax White with some Apothecary Grey Contrast used over it. And an Edge Highlight using White Scar. There's only a couple more things left to show you and our flash kits will be finished. I want to finish up by showing you some different ways I like to add interest to my flash kits. We don't just want flat colours everywhere, so we can paint some checker patterns in places that orcs are famous for. Start by painting a grid over the area you want your checker pattern with your chosen colour. Now fill in every other square, these don't have to be perfect. 
because if you're a bit messy you can neaten the squares up and orcs aren't very neat anyway. Lenses, lights and glowy areas are all painted in the same way, starting with some Baharov blue. Now use some blue horror and finish with white scar making sure we can see each layer as we get lighter. Let's finish our flash kits by creating some interest by adding a couple of different tones and areas. First of all using some nylock oxide to help age the metals. And finally thin down scrag brown can be used to give the appearance of rust in some areas. It's now time to stick all the parts together and I use super glue for this so I don't ruin any of the paint. Our flash kits are now finished and I hope I've been able to give you the confidence and knowledge to go away and paint your own. I have plenty of other tutorials on the channel that will help you paint all kinds of miniatures so make sure to go check them out as well. I really enjoy making these tutorials and I hope you find them useful. You can really help the channel by liking the video and commenting below. You can also support me at Patreon which makes a massive difference in helping me make these tutorials. Make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future content and I'll see you in the next video.